Dow Watch episode eight. In this episode, we're going to have a little discussion about Dash, Dash Evolution or Dash Platform, whatever they go with. We're going to discuss PIVX, whether or not they should fund BlockDX's UI upgrade. We're going to discuss Evmos, and there's no drama in this episode. Talking about how, whether or not they should pay for their recent hackathon with Covalent. And finally, our guest DAO for this episode is Decentraland. And we're going to be talking about accountability. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to Dow Watch episode 8. This one is going to be an absolute corker. Um, we're going to start off, well, I'm going to introduce my guest Dow this particular episode and it's going to be Decentraland. Decentraland, as um, everybody may or may not know, is a kind of virtual reality world in what is known as the metaverse. Um, it's Take some flack for not having that many users, but I'll tell you what it does have. It does have a massive treasury, loads of members, and loads of people who own land, including yours truly, or my particular group, my conglomerate, my uh, my gang, as it were. So we're going to look into Decentraland a little bit later, but before we do that, let's get started where we always get started and that is with Dash. So we're going to go through Dash, then PIVX, then Evmos, and then the guest DAO, which is going to be Decentraland. So the first proposal we're going to discuss today is going to be the evolution branding decision on Dash. Now, this particular proposal is basically whether or not Dash should continue to call its new platform evolution or go back to calling it evolution they changed and decided to start calling it platform for a little while um dash evolution has been around six years in the making let's say at least i'd seven or eight years in the making it has been and during that time obviously they started to get a lot of flack because they hadn't produced what they said they would produce despite having a massive budget um, more than easily more than enough to do what they said they was going to do but for some reason or another it didn't happen and or it hasn't happened as yet it still hasn't happened they have done things along the way which builds the foundation but end users are not uh, entirely excited about like the uh, deterministic master nodes and other things of that ilk which make the network stronger but don't add any new features or don't do anything that end users um, give a damn about. So basically, this proposal offers for Dash to go back to being called Dash Evolution as opposed to being called the Dash Platform. Um, a yes vote would signal that you prefer that Dash Platform and related associated with our general contract and username engines be broadly branded as Dash Evolution and a no vote says that you don't want it to be called Evolution. Uh, it doesn't actually offer any other alternatives. And there's a lot of discussion along here. Some people are saying that they want it to go back to being called Dash Evo. Some people are, are uh, saying that they want it to be called platform or something else. I added my own two, two pence in here um, when I said about the negative branding with the Millennium Dome. Uh, it's quite interesting, actually. So I, what, I, what I had said was that... Um, the closest thing I could think of to what has happened with Dash is the Millennium Dome in the UK. It was a dome that took ages to build, went massively over budget. Then when it was built, everybody was underwhelmed and the government took a lot of flack. They changed the brand and they called it the O2 Dome or the O2 Arena or whatever it's called now. And all of the bad history was forgotten. Um, 
the the on the other side of the argument we'll do the pros and cons in a second but briefly on the other side of the argument dash evolution already has some search engine momentum so people go into google if you type just type dash you don't find the crypto but if you find dash evolution you're more likely to find it so it already has some search engine momentum um yeah so someone else agreed it's a good point, but I think that a lot of our target market with Evolution isn't familiar with cryptocurrency from 2017, which, let's be honest, was the last time Dash was really in the spotlight. The negative branding that comes with Evo is minor, in my opinion. That's interesting. Um, but anyway, the, the discussion rages on. I may have put in two comments here. I think I commented on a different proposal. So, um, So that's what's happening in the, in the in the world of dash um so we'll quickly look at the pros and cons because this one's quite a uh, it's it's one for discussion i i also suggested that they have some sort of tournament where they allow people to to um to put forward new branding and ask for a payout if the branding is used um that would increase some engagement i thought it was a good idea nobody else really did and i think one of the ogs would have to champion it for it to happen so at the moment they're left with a choice of dash evolution or or dash the platform i think the platform is terrible um i think that was just a a name that you call something before you call it anything like when you have a baby and you call it the baby you can't send the baby to school called the baby unless he wants to be a rapper um the pros the pros let's do the pros and cons the pros dash evolution like i said before already has good search engine economies uh it's already it's already been there and if if you do move the name to the platform then i guess you do move away from the stink uh so the cons of it continuing to or the cons of it being going back to the name of dash evolution the, the the cons dash evolution i haven't really explained what it is it's a whole bunch of new things to make dash more usable so instead of having long names you would have names like how you have in ethereum cryptosi.eve problem is all of these things were fought up seven years ago and a lot of them exist elsewhere now so they're definitely not revolutionary ideas um oh it's so it's it's very difficult it's very difficult to discuss because it does speak to cryptocurrencies having a life cycle, which I hate because I hate to say that projects are outdated. But in this scenario, we are arguing about quite a few things that are now outdated technologies. Um, the cons of being called evolution is it would leave Dash open to constant and almost never ending FUD. Uh, I I know for a fact people would jump out the window and say, "Oh well, Dash Evolution is finally here, and you've got you've got dot dash names, which is the same as what Ethereum has had four years ago." This is trash. Da 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 da. Um, it's going to be very difficult to shake that. I think that negative branding. I think it'd be very difficult to shake it. Um, doesn't say anything in here about any other names that it could use apart from evolution there's no call to action for people to put forward any other suggestions i think um, someone does make a good point that too many cooks would spoil the, the the broth as it were but unfortunately that there needs someone needs to take charge of this um, either the marketing team or someone needs to take charge and find a name for the new release and you can't use the old seven year old name for me personally um, I, I heard about the Dash platform I was quite excited oh Dash are doing something new then when I found that Dash platform was just evolution in my head I was like oh well, that's a bit that's a bit crappy who, who gives a damn like it's not it's not nothing that anybody really cares about because it's not new and we learn cycle after cycle that even if the things that come aren't better uh, privacy projects for example even if they're not better if they are new they catch momentum and rebranding helps with that um 
So what am I voting for this? Uh, I'm going to vote no. I don't think it should go back to being called Dash Evolution. I think there are much better names. I don't think it should be called The Platform either. I think the choice between Dash Evolution or The Platform is like the choice between a punch in the face or a kick in the face. Um, A punch would probably be better, but if I've got a choice and one of the choices is a kiss on the face, I'm going to take a kiss. Um... Uh, there are other things being said here. I would upvote that when I'm on my proper account. So yeah, I'm going to say no to this this particular one. I'm going to, I'm going to I'm going to vote no. Um, looking at the budget so far, I don't know if it's passing or not. Looks like it's doing okay. But yes, thank you to Magnus for for bringing this forward because it's good if someone speaks to it. Uh, One time payment of two dash. I think I think that's fine. I don't think there should be a problem with him being paid for taking the time out to put this forward. If people do decide to go back to Evolution and it is his idea, let him collect his hundred dollars minus the. Well, no, because he would have put five dash in to put the bloody proposal forward. So he's he's spent the best part of four hundred dollars just putting this in. Okay. Any who three hundred dollars. Anywho, let's move on. So that's Dash. Dash wasn't really Dash wasn't really popping this month. Was there a, was there another proposal I was looking at? Uh oh yes, there was this one which I, I looked at slightly. I like this one. Um Dash having a town hall. Problem is I'll, I'll go over it quickly because the other one was a bit lacklustre. So I'll go over it quickly. What it is, it's another place for you to find out about all of the governance things that are happening. So basically, it's just another Dash Central, but possibly for people who don't have Masternodes. Um, it gives you a bit more information, historical Masternode owner, vote counts, um, historical proposals from people. Um, I came in and put in a few points, da, 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 but the discussion on it is quite limited. Um, the site itself already exists. Let's have a quick look at it. I said it could do with some sprucing up. It's no, it's not really much different to Dash Central. I think it could add features that Dash Central doesn't have, but um, I think it's it also may uh, separate the conversation. So, as well as there being conversation on things here, there's also conversation on the Dash forum, there's also conversation in Discord, and everything gets quite disjointed. I think it's usually better if all of the discussions are in a few places, especially language-based. So, if you've got a community that speak a different language and they all gravitate towards a different app, then fine. In this scenario, in Dash, they don't. So, another place to discuss. Um... I think I went yes on this one. But anyway, Dash was quite quiet this month. Let's move on to PIVX. And this one is what I would call a a doozy. This one's a doozy. First of all, I'm going to say there's not a cat in hell's chance that this proposal would have even gotten this far when I was a part of PIVX. There's literally no, there's no chance in hell. This guy would have got shouted down by the, the devs that were uh, quote unquote in charge at the time. It's not a knock against them. Um, obviously, I, I will say that they're idiots in other videos, but not in this one. I don't, I love them really. Um, a guy called Sean, we've covered his proposals before. He seems to be the graphics guy at PIVX at the moment. Uh, he's in charge of making the the brand, keeping the brand on on track, and uh, creating the graphics for it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What he's proposed is forty thousand piv to go and build a new front end for another project called Block DX. Now, what this means is that PivX governance will be directly funding another crypto project and the project they're funding is called block dx i've used block dx a few times it is horrible it's horrible to use it does answer a a very important um issue that needs to be answered especially for privacy coins and that is the need for 
or privacy coins that is the need for a dex somewhere where they won't be delisted from where people can connect themselves run their own node and then trade between cryptocurrencies that are even built on different things so at the moment you can do it our dex is on ethereum but you can only trade trade things that are on that particular chain now with these types of dexes which i'd like to call a true dex you can trade across chains so i can trade pivx with bitcoin in a trustless manner um block dx it, it's it's a it's a good project it's, it's a horrible experience but it's a good project uh the problem that they're saying is that uh block dx currently written in angular that they want to build a lightweight desktop app that can serve as a foundation for a web free version rewriting block dx in react will enable us to deliver this uh, they want the app to be cleaner lighter easier to maintain less bug prone compared to the existing angular version fine um if you understand anything about project management or development you'll know that react js is far more popular currently than angular being more popular means you can find more developers to do it um, which means if you run into problems in the future they're smaller problems because more people can solve it a lot of people can use angular but um react is a better solution at this time in the future there may be something better then you end up moving again target environments you want it to work in modern web browsers including mobile linux desktop windows desktop and mac desktop okay so in that case they are talking about the lightweight version with this dex like i said before you have to have a all of this is quite important actually you have to have a heavyweight version which is where you run your own node and then you have to run a full node running a full node means you need to download the entire blockchain history like if you download it on pivx i guess now it'll be over 20 gigabytes large you can't really do that on a mobile it will take too long it would chew up your data it would move too slowly um you would generally do it on a desktop or a laptop if i want to just move from pivx into monero uh via a dex system i may not want to have a full pivx node and a full monero node that's a lot for me to do just to trade between only two pairs if i want to trade between another pair then i have to get a full node of that and that whole system was horrible um for me it was horrible i think that kind of killed block dx in the crib so they went off and they built a, a light version which allowed other people to run the nodes you to just connect to their nodes like our light wallets generally work you connect to their node they've got the full block of whatever you're trading you can then go and trade effectively via them so you don't need to download the whole thing that got released after i'd lost interest in block dx but uh, apparently it exists now i haven't i genuinely genuinely haven't used it what they want is they want 40,000 PIV to redo the front end. Um, the front end being the interface so that it looks good on mobile, desktop. So they want what is known as a... Oh, I don't think the word is reactive. I can't remember what the word is. But basically what they want it to work on desktop and work on mobile. Uh, responsive is the word. Responsive. 40,000 PIV at this time is around 10,000 dollars um i think that's great value 75 percent will go to the front end developer around seven and a half and 25 percent will go to sean for project management and quality analysis um testing and whatnot qa uh creates the github task and maintains the project board designs the qa task code and review and qa coordination with pivx marketing team uh, a part of which we discussed uh, in the last episode once this ui build is successfully funded and delivered the following items will be next on the development roadmap integrate x Lite with block dx combine features into one app i thought that was a part of this so they're doing they're redoing block dx oh that changes things a little bit um research support for erc20 tokens in xbridge some or code already exists for this that would help them to jump on the DeFi trend, which was the trend that inevitably got me kicked out of PIVX. Uh, here they are four years later, jumping on it. 
More info on this. The follow arts is completed. Important points to note. The timeline for this UI build phase is expected to be no more than six to eight weeks. Estimated that funding requested above will cover most, if not all. If, however, the project is not completed within this project, then a detailed report of remaining items. So they may come back and ask for more money. Um, I, I think that would be reasonable because that is a very cheap price at the moment. Expected for this phase one development milestones. Uh, project robot document is about six months at this early stage possible to give more precise date right okay uh, loads of loads of discussion here right okay okay so here we go uh, a guy called Gerald has popped in it looks like Gerald is probably somebody else who doesn't want his uh, I guess negative comments to be attached to his his personal brand um i said i'd like to see some screenshots because i know he would have done design on it so he knows what it's going to look like by this point i know that much uh event, no incentive for pivx to pay for a platform which will hopefully have lots of coins and tokens on including pivx yes okay so people are wondering why are why is Pivot directly funding something else? And this is why I said there's no chance this would have happened in my day. In my day, when we done any time we done alliances, uh, people would say, "Oh, what's in it for us? Why is there? Why are they gaining so much from us?" During this time, Pivot was a much bigger project. Um, a lot of the projects that we have done alliances with now are, are now bigger projects than Pivot. But anyway. Uh, Okay, so Eric has come back on the attack. That statement makes no sense. Everyone else agrees that Pivx should do this. You should say there is. You say there is no incentive. That is a contradiction. Uh, it's not a contradiction, Eric. Imagine getting to the point where every single coin has Pivx as a trading pair, allowing these coins lacking privacy to jump into and then out of Pivx to break the trail. It will dramatically increase trading volume and expose many people to Pivx. Heck, they may decide holding Pivx earns rewards a great idea, decrease demand, blah, 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 tight leader, that and the other. Like connected to my Pivx wallet so that inside my Pivx wallet itself, a user can exchange to another coin, perhaps pay for something using Pivx and the third party, and it's XBTC, letting my Pivx wallet or another app just exchange in the background. Yes, that's that all makes sense i think both of these two have got points the point that eric makes is a bit hopeful and i think what gerald would like is that tied down so um it is one-way traffic pivx are pumping actual money actual value actual uh, people into this i don't know if sean came from block dx he might have done but the point of the matter is why isn't block dx paying for their new ui themselves and i'll tell you why because their value is currently in the toilet uh there's no trading vol there's no uh volume on their trading pairs anywhere their market cap is irrelevant um that could say 80 million if there's no trading volume you know it'll go to zero you can't sell it anyway there's no liquidity uh so they they have no money They've run out of money and they're clearly not making any money with the product that they currently have. As far as GitHub is concerned, things are not looking amazing with the project. We've got some things that have happened here recently. Uh, the end user dashboard. We shall see who's doing that. Oh, my my Internet is disconnected for whatever reason. So we're not going to be able to see that. Um but I did look beforehand and a lot of the work has been done by Sean. I think he might be putting it up on behalf of his developer because he does say in his proposal that he's not the developer um, and we can't see a developer on those things. So the developer might put forward himself. Anyway, the point is that Blocknet as a project is in the realms of failed project. So is Pivx to be fair, but uh, if a project, if Pivx can stump up 10 grand to go and do something and Blocknet can't, I think Blocknet is further into the field of uh, failed project. I think what Gerald is saying is that he would like to have something put in stone on how Block DX is going to enhance or put Pivx in a special position. Um, and that doesn't seem to be a part of the proposal. Um, Gerald has got a point. Eric has also got a point, but Eric's point is based on altruism. Gerald's point is based on fact. Uh, Basically, the next part should be given to everything Pivx related. Okay. 
on most of the post bar calls. Imagine there's no need. Why would you say my government name? Just leave it as cryptosis. So this is obviously not a new Pivian if he knows my name. Uh, imagine there's no need to imagine as that is not what is being proposed. Right, exactly. So I agree with Gerald here. Pivx will not uh, be the main trading coin and multiple coins of tokens will be added as well. Pivx is just foot in the build to finish off the platform which is questionable it will actually be worthwhile for pivx i see no benefit bar being added to a dex that isn't finished at a huge fee oh gerald yes uh you might be right it may fail but should we just get onto one dex then and hope it would be popular successful one our plan is to do what it takes to get listed on many dexes right now there are only three or four true dexes more will come i think that's true there is not much mentioned in the proposal because it is one step of many. Please see the roadmap linked to the proposal. Important points at the end. Uh, thanks for the feedback. Everyone's comments. Times, questions, suggestions being made. So all of this has happened uh, after. Somebody's added some screenshots. Which I'm not going to be able to see. Uh, actually a lower reasonably priced proposal for a UI build of this complexity and quality. Uh, suggestions where the money would be better spent I'm happy to hear them I don't like that line I don't like that line There's no, you're better than that Sean you're, Sean you're better than that if you have suggestions where this money would be better spent I'm happy to Sean you're better than that you're better than that Sean uh, da, da, da. Hey Jeffrey the creation of this amazing deck was actually done it more than three years ago I had tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars spent on it by a previous Blocknet team yeah, I know it still looks and feels clunky even after that, but the money was arguably not prioritised in the right place. Development also slowed down last few years due to some technical debt, yes, which you're going to run into. Pivot's got loads of it. Yes, we got a block next focus on new product. Hope it's kickstarting. Pivot's on block net down. To deploy Pivot a lot easier by including it in the S node or deploy a tool. Uh, da da da. Okay, so what I, what I would say, what I would say um, is the only reasonable response to to, to Gerald's queer worries is that Blocknet come and give Pivx a huge chunk of this dead token. That's what they need to do. They need to give it a huge chunk of this dead token. Otherwise, so it does turn out Sean was from Blocknet. Uh, they need to give them a huge chunk of this dead token. Otherwise, they need to. They need to put Pivx in the brand in somewhere. One of the two things really needs to happen. Um, should happen. I'm still okay with this though. To be absolutely honest, let's 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 have, like I say, parliamentary procedure. Pros and cons. Okay, I feel like we've been on this one for quite a long time. Yes, we have been on it for ages. Sorry. So so much more happened, and this is what happens. You've got to be on this every day. I really should have read this before I started recording. I read it yesterday before all these posts had been made. Um, okay, so let's start with the the pros. It's very good value for money as far as building a UI is concerned. Um, I've said, I said in my post 10 years ago, we built a new UI, and that was good value then, luckily, because uh, I think Fursey built it. And he was prepared to take a hit on it because he was very invested in the product, the project and its mission. And he done it for, I believe it was around 10K we put a proposal through at the time. Um, here we are, what I would say is about three or four years later, at least four years later. And we're doing the same thing for the same price and the value of everything else has gone up. Inflation is not a joke. So I think it's great value for money. Um, including the project manager and QA incentives I think is smart because it means that he's going to get paid separately I love that so that I didn't ever do that I didn't have the, the, the guts to do it so well done Sean um, if you have a, a huge payout for the person who's actually bringing this forward and putting all that time in then you'll get more you will get more um, mercenary proposals and i think mercenary proposals are a good thing if they're good for the chain um 
you'll get people who may flutter between chains people like me who see something is needed they know people who are prepared to do it those people aren't familiar with the proposals or the community or the DAO aspect but they're prepared to do the work um, you add a little fee on top for you being that connector between the two you oversee the project you manage it you do the Q&A you make sure that the team being paid deliver what's being paid and you get paid for that I think that's the next step for DAOs this um this mercenary proposal scenario I think is great I, I love that Sean's done that so that's for me probably the, the main pro to be honest um it will help PivX users with a better looking Dex is another pro if it's light it's great I would I wanted to use a Dex for my uh winnings yesterday my winnings my masternode rewards yesterday uh I don't want to send it to Bitrix I don't want to send it to Binance I don't want to do KYC I'm using a privacy coin for a reason. I want to change it to Bitcoin. If you have a DEX that I can do that with in a lightweight fashion where I don't have to have a whole Bitcoin chain and a whole PIVX chain, I'm more likely to use PIVX and it's just better, right? So that's a huge thing for PIVX users, not to be understated. The cons, massive con, obvious con, should be being paid for by BlockDX. Um, there's no real way to get around that. PIVX foot in the bill just so that they can use it uh i feel like pivx are only paying for it because pivx can so maybe they're being taken advantage of yeah block dx should be paying for it or block dx should make pivx a much more pivotal pivotal part of their project um this is the type of situation where in the traditional world you would have a takeover PIVX would just come and buy Block DX. Or in the crypto world, you would have a, a fork. Someone in PIVX just forks Block DX and then they do it themselves and they hold the tokens or they make the, the ground token on Block DX, they make it PIVX. Um, then it's worth it. As it is now, it's arguable. Okay. Um, another con, massive con, is it won't remove the greatest barrier to entry. The greatest issue with block dx is that there's no liquidity there that's that's the biggest problem um they didn't have no liquidity because they had a horrible system where you had to have full nodes now they've got a light node version i'm not really sure how that works i'm quite certain you're still gonna either have to rely on a full node uh someone else having a full node you can trust uh i don't know what the cons are of this x light wallet because i've not looked into it enough but either way there's not a lot of volume there um, that's the main problem. The the way the UI was, I didn't really find that that was really that that big of a problem. Oh, all right, it was horrible. It was ugly. It was definitely old fashioned, um, but it wasn't that much of a problem. When I looked through Sean's, <coughs> on another note, excuse me. When I looked through Sean's thing, I saw that he's been looking at the Uniswap interface and Uniswap uh, V2 core. I found that interesting because I'm not sure if that means that he is planning on having a uniswap style swap um i think i think that would be nice if he could if he could build something like that i think that would be nice um so yeah so that's the pros and the cons what am i going to vote on this one i'm going to vote yes there are some cons and they are huge cons they are massive cons but if you weigh the two things up i really have to go with the yes um it's a good enough deal the, the price is cheap enough. I think Sean will deliver something that is correct, that works. I think that PIVX can lean on Block DX, should lean on Block DX. There is enough of a history between the two projects that I don't think Block DX will uh, do PIVX dirty. Uh, I think PIVX would benefit from it enough in the long run to make it worth even 10k. I think they will benefit enough from it in the long run. If Block DX can pick up any momentum at all, PIVX will be in the perfect position to benefit from it. On a side note, a friend of mine is building the decks called Sarai, S E R A I. He's a good developer. Um, I wouldn't say that if you gave him 10K, he would include PIVX in that. I, I don't think he would. But um, I think there are other options, and there are other options being built. So. Um, yeah, let's move on. 
This is probably going to be the longest episode in history. Yeah, I'm going to have to do these last two very quickly. Okay. Evmos uh, and Covalent Hackathon participant rewards readjustment. Okay. I'm going to have to pause here. Okay. And we're back. Uh, sorry about that. Just lost connection. Um, right. So where were we? Covalent Hackathon rewards readjustment. Um in brief, what's happened is Evmos have funded this Covalent hackathon. I'll put a link to the actual hackathon um, rewards ceremony in the description. Hackathon is where a bunch of people come and they create little projects on this chain. And the ones that are good go on to become projects. The ones that are, are not good go on to become nothing. And the prize money gets shared among the best of the projects that are created in this short period of time they're great uniswap famously was a hackathon project at one point and now it's probably the best thing ever to happen to uh ethereum um okay so what happened here was they funded this hackathon the price of evmos went down dramatically because it's a bear market and um yeah and then they couldn't afford to pay the people with the FMOS that they'd collected. So they've come cap in hand asking for more FMOS. Um, it's very straightforward. Uh, it looks like it's passed. FMOS has a very, very short governance window most of the time. Here we go. So it's passed. It's passed with quite good numbers as well. No drama tiny bit of no with veto quite a lot of abstaining tiny bit of no <laughs> some people i guess would think that one fmos equals one fmos unfortunately that then means that one pint of milk equals one fmos one day and 10 fmos uh the next day anyway this one's a nice straightforward one um the pros of this proposal i think it's always good to pay your bills if you owe money you pay money means people are more likely to come and work with you in the future it's just a good way to do business um the cons i can't really think of any i guess one would be that the winning um projects in this hackathon there's not much has been made of them they've not uh, they've not promoted them well enough and uh, they're not pushing people towards those projects well enough not for me anyway even the actual prize ceremony itself and all of the demos and that um, doesn't have very many views on YouTube. I haven't seen it really been promoted on Twitter or anywhere else. Um, I think it should be promoted here. You should be able to view some of the videos here. See what's coming possibly on Evmos. Things that people can get stuck into on Evmos. I can't see why it shouldn't be here. But one of these things here coming soon. You click it. You get to see the hackathon. You get to see all the winning projects you get to click and watch their demonstration and you can join their own little discords or whatever quite simple quite straightforward i think it should be a thing it's not a thing uh for me what would i vote on this one it's a uh, easy yes you should pay your bills this for the first time we're doing evmos with no drama this one's a simple yes um looking over evmos recent proposals they've got some grants go in for some other people there's another liquidity incentive and uh, space fi i don't really like liquidity incentives uh main net upgrade only some small things happening on this particular upgrade it's not it's not a massive one uh it does say what's being done here uh ibc go to ethermint version 21 um, there was one which I thought was good. Enable liquid staking via liquid staking zones like Stride and Quicksilver. Um, I got a quite a good uh, airdrop from Stride. You get airdrops from these projects usual, uh, often. Uh, store EVM parameters under a single key to for performance optimization. That's a good one. So basically, small things. I think the biggest being this one top one uh so that's another thing that's going on at evmos at the moment formalizing funding the governance council work stream yeah it's, 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 
I don't, this is pretty pointless. Not pointless, but, you know, these guys are going to, they're going to be in charge anyway. So it's just, yeah, it's just formalising, I guess. So I don't care about that. I don't care about that. A lot of abstaining going on there in that one. A lot of people are like, yeah, who cares? Who gives a damn? Who gives a damn? So that's that one. That one's a yes. Nice, nice, easy yes for this one. Pay your bills. And finally, the guest proposer is Decentraland. If we look at, I prefer to look at them here. Um, their market cap is much bigger than 28 million, but 28 million is what they have in the treasury to spend. Uh, and you can even see what their treasury is made up of. Unlike Pivex or Dash, or even Evmos, unlike those guys, with these Ethereum-based DAOs, they have a treasury which is made up of different tokens. I'm a little uh, perturbed by Decentraland as their treasury seems to be almost exclusively mana, their own token, which is a bit bad. They should have a lot more DAI and a lot more USDC. If they've got 28 million, really you'd like to see, I don't know, 4 or 5 million in DAI and USDC something they should have possibly done at the height of the bull market when their net worth would have been closer to 300 million uh, in their treasury either way 28 million is a lot of money it's a lot of money you can do a lot of things with that a lot of developing with that uh, a lot of promoting a lot of marketing you can do quite a lot with 28 million it's not massive but well you know anyway let's see what the proposal they've gone for um, the proposal that I wanted to look at was a set duration for DAO committee members. Uh, the absence of a duration for DAO committee members in Decentraland can lead to several potential issues, including a lack of accountability, a lack of fresh perspectives, a lack of trust, reduced democratic participation. We don't want the incumbents to stay incumbent forever. Um, this is of particular interest to me as I own some land in Decentraland over in um oh we gave it a name but i can't remember it now oh i can't remember it now damn it but we did have a name for it me and another guy who's got a property right next to mine fun fact my land in decentraland was worth more than my actual house for a little period of time during the last bull market um i i d dare say it would happen again Um, there's a good example of what can happen of a, of how you can have a counter or how you can have a fixed term in a DAO and they've already done it here in this accountability DAO um, this little committee or this little group of people oversee I'm going to let that load in the background they oversee what's happening with um, some funds right this one for me uh, let's let's uh, let's go for the pros and the cons. For me, the pros are it encourages in engagement. If you've got a, a group or a committee, they might have a little mini um, little mini site which shows the members, shows how you can contact them, um, shows what they believe in, what they want, what they don't want, and then you could decide whether you want to keep them as committee members once every twelve months. Um, Without that, these committee members can run roughshod. They can do whatever they want, and they they won't get voted out. Um, it's just not good. So the pros are it, it encourages engagement with regular uh, elections. It removes complacency. They'll know that they need to keep on working. They need to keep on keeping the the community happy, and it removes corruption. They they know that if they do bad things, they won't keep their their position. Uh, it adds accountability. I can't think of any reasons why you wouldn't want to have this as a thing. I couldn't think of any cons. I couldn't think of a single one. However, as you can see here, it looks like the incumbents are well in the lead, massively in the lead. Um, unfortunately, on Snapshot, there is no discussion. It would be nice if when you put in a vote, this might be a feature I might ask Snapshot to add. When you put in a vote, you could add a uh, a memo you could say something i'm voting this because or i vote against this because and then when we come and look at the votes like 
you could just click and the memo comes up. Um, could it be on chain? It could be on a related chain and just reference through here. There are plenty of chains that can store text or video, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to put that in as a <coughs> as a feature request. Excuse me. So it seems like this is voting no. And the reason why is because you've got some very heavy hands like NWIZ who are voting no. Uh, Morris Mustang .eth. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, 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 uh. Now you get a little glimpse into what Cryptosi does when he sees that someone's doing something heavy handed. I like to go and see how much money they have and what NFTs they have. So this guy has what looks like a few bored apes. The matching kennels, world of women. No, this guy is an NFT powerhouse, clearly. Uh, if we saw it by collection, yep, he's got some bored apes, mutant apes, kennel club. So he was early on bored apes. He's bought a few. Oh, he's got the sewer passes. Looks like for free. World of women. He's got some estates. Goblin town. He's doing bloody well. Okay. Um, Morris Mustang. Eve is someone that we should keep an eye on. Let's see what he's bought recently. This is something that I I do. This is. I know this is hella creepy, but it's something that you, everyone should do. If you find someone that's doing well, you have a look and you see what they're buying. Um, he sent to ETH this particular wallet. something's gone wrong there anyway i'll do that on my own time but uh let's get back to it point remains yeah here's the here's where someone else here's another um this is decentraland related and they've got a 12 month policy after 12 months you uh you have to come back but anyway all these heavy hands have come through and they've all said no 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 um, and this is the only guy with what I would say is a little bit of integrity. <clears throat> he said yes, then it's no. And the smaller people are the ones saying yes, it seems. So the yes and no's are not so, um, they're not so obvious. It seems that there's, look, there's quite a lot of yeses. There are quite a lot of yeses, quite a lot of yeses. And it seems like the no's are coming from the real heavy hands. Um, should the council members be allowed to vote in this? Have they voted in this? Okay. How would I vote? In this one, I would I would clearly vote yes. I think that they should be held accountable. They should be, they should want to keep their job. Um, I'm sad that this hasn't gone through. I think it was a good proposal. I'm sad that it hasn't gone through. It's 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 worrying to see it go no by this much of a landslide for whatever reason. Um, I would have gone with yes. Uh, there's no link in this proposal to where the, um, there's no link to this proposal to where the discussion is, which would be a good idea. You've linked to other things, should have linked to where the discussion is, so I can go there and throw my 10 pence in. But yeah. Oh, I forgot to say at the top, smash the like button. If you've made it this far, congratulations. This one's been a bit of a slow-moving episode. I've, 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 I've not had the energy that I need to have in this particular episode. But overall, um, the bin men are making too much noise outside my house. Overall, we uh, a quick summary. The Dash one. Um, oh, this was not the Dash one. <laughs> this was one that I looked at after. My internet is going so slow. But overall, yeah, overall, the um, the dash one was was a no. I I don't I don't think that they should go back to Brandon as evolution. 
Pivx one was a yes, even though there are some very, very strong counter arguments, such as why aren't Block DX paying for it? Evmos was an easy yes. You should pay for the the uh, people who won in that particular hackathon. If you get a chance, go and watch the hackathon. I will put the link in the description. Uh, Decentraland was also a yes, although that one looks like it's not going to be passed. Um, and yeah, that is the end of this episode. Please like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And I will be back in two weeks with um, a new guest and more DAO stuff. Keep it locked.